uh, Lockheed Hudson touches down at a desert aerodrome bringing the mysterious Mr. Bullfinch. No disguise, but a fine collection of hats and clothing for the secret visit to the Middle East. General Auchinleck meets the Prime Minister at the start of his electric visit to the Egyptian war zone. Mr. Churchill straightway goes up the line, making personal contact with South African fighting men as a very important part of his busy program. Travelling up to El Alamein, the Prime Minister made a point of chatting with the gun crew, men of a Royal Artillery Regiment doing stout work with a 4.5. Mr. Churchill's visit is a typical Winstonian surprise. The familiar, breezy friendliness goes down well with the boys. Not least of all, the Aussies, one of whom, upon discovering who the sun-helmeted figure was, exclaimed, Cripes, it's old Winnie. At a base landing ground, the High Commissioner for Egypt, Sir Miles Lamson, Sir Alexander Cadogan and General Wavell await the Prime Minister's arrival in the Giant Liberator Commando. Mr. Churchill is now wearing the uniform of Air Commodore. The Prime Minister, as guest of honour, is invited to lunch in the officers' mess. It is perhaps redundant for us to remark here that our camera records only the incidental progress of the Prime Minister's tour. Deep behind all this, far-reaching and important plans are being made. This is no sightseeing tour by statesmen and generals. It is a start of far bigger things embracing not only the Middle East, but Russia and India. Mr. Churchill's meetings with King Farouk and President Stalin bear this out. Meanwhile, Mr. Churchill tells his listeners much to hearten them. Surely these must be the most intimate pictures ever taken of him. After lunch, he leaves the tent and makes his way through an enthusiastic crowd. Now the sombrero and the siren suit. With General Smuts in Cairo, Mr. Churchill carries the baby again, the son of Sir Miles Lamson. The great South African General Smuts, General Auchinleck, since succeeded by General Alexander, Generals Wavell and Brooke, Mr. Casey, Admiral Harwood, and Air Chief Marshal Tedder. So we leave the embassy, together with the fervent wish that much good will emerge from the journeyings of our Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs>